Hey everybody, here are six tips for better cause and effect essays. So after reading all of your essays, I've come up with a list of six little pieces of advice that could apply to everyone's essays. So the first thing I want to mention, this was an error I found in almost everybody's essay was the misuse of present perfect because we're talking about an issue that began in the past and continues to be important now you need to use the present perfect so let me give you an example here in this sentence the writer shows that corn becomes our main food. Corn isn't becoming presently our main food. It has become our main food. Because humans have used every part of it and it is very cheap. Okay. It has been very cheap or it is actually works here too but make sure for anything that started in the past and continues to be true now you need to use the present perfect here's another example many other small farmers gave up growing other plants they gave up growing other plants now this happened in the past has happened up until now. So many other small farmers have given up growing other plants because they have not been able to keep their farms without subsidies. Okay, and alas, this question. Why the nation decides to produce corn? Let's change that to a present perfect question, something that is still important now. Why has the nation decided to produce corn? Okay, tip number one, use the present perfect in this essay. Let's move on to tip number two. Words like just or probably, or I think, or etc., way, so, very, even good and bad, these kind of words weaken your stance. I'm calling these weak words. You want to take, you want to sound academic, so these really don't belong in an academic paper. For example, corn-fed beef is way cheaper than grass-fed beef. Hmm, way cheaper. You don't need the way, okay? Corn-fed beef, beef is, how about, significantly cheaper than grass-fed beef, okay? Um, for the second sentence here, <laughs> this is not from anyone's essay, but a lot of you did use these words, so this is a bit of an exaggeration. I think you probably just might want to eat organic food, etc. All of these words here, I think. Remember, you don't want to say um, I. You don't want the I say with the I. Think of another way to express your opinion without saying I. Probably sounds like you're unsure just sounds like you're in a conversation, like it's very colloquial, might is unsure, etc. is also just not appropriate for an academic paper. It's not specific, okay? Be as specific as possible with your diction. Speaking of diction, here we are to point number three. Use a variety of diction or words in your essays. 
my hint here is to use a thesaurus. So I saw in many of your essays that you repeated this phrase over and over. Corn is in everything. Corn is in everything. Corn is in everything. Corn is in everything. Okay, so you want to vary it up. Um, there are lots of different ways to say things. The English language is very rich and you can find multiple ways to express the same exact idea. So, the abundance of corn is astounding or corn is ubiquitous in the supermarket or corn is pervading or pervasive in everything we eat. All right, this, these express the same kind of idea, but uh, they don't say corn and everything, not with the same exact words. So this also goes for your transitions too. Don't use the same exact signal words over and over in the same types of transitions. I don't want to see also, moreover, so, also, moreover, so. Try to use different transitions and different types of transitions. I'll give you another example of that when we move on to point four. All right, point four. Speaking of transitions, please use them. This really helps with the paper um, flowing and in a cause and effect essay, you should use cause and effect signals. Um, the YouTube video that I posted on Moodle has some good examples of cause and effect language. Um, but I want to show you this little excerpt from an essay that used really good transitions. So let's see here. We got right here, um, the author says, more than 30% of type 2 diabetes in children is caused by fast food because fast foods are loaded with corn products in a number of different forms such as sweetener, syrup, starch, oil, and as artificial sugar that increases our calories consumption which promotes di obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. heart disease. Besides, he actually used these. Besides these, I want to be more specific, these ailments, there are other health issues that have direct linkage to corn. All right, so here he's listed a bunch of different examples of the effects of corn, and then his transition here to, to make the flow go, he says, besides these ailments, okay, we're referring to what came before here and then he says there are other health issues that are directly linked to corn okay so here at the end of this paragraph he's saying we have these problems here but there are more problems related to corn and this sentence is the transition sentence into the next paragraph where he talks about a different way that corn affects our health, okay? So uh, words like this, these, those, um, th these pronouns here, um, they refer back to the previous idea and this creates helps create a flow. Um, and then in the next paragraph here, he says, using corn as the food in the feedlot also affects our health, okay? So he's using corn again. So he's linking this next paragraph and sentence to the paragraph before. And the word also is a transition word or a, a linking word that links this paragraph to this paragraph, okay? These two sentences are connected, but the sentence here in this paragraph is introducing a new and a different idea, although it is still connected to the idea of health. All right, so since animals are, corn, are fed corn and other nat unnatural products like scraps of animals, they must be given antibiotics to prevent disease. He's explaining a new idea. And then 
the effect. And the signal for the effect is as a result. Okay? There are many different signals for effects. Uh, consequently, therefore, um, thus. So those are just some examples. Okay, let's move on. Two more left. Thanks for hanging with me. Number five, check your facts. Make sure what you're saying in your essay is really true. A lot of you claimed some things that uh, I don't think you could really back up. So be careful. Be very careful when you're making claims. Make sure there is evidence to support them. For example, a few people wrote, farmers now prefer to grow corn. Sorry, Anne. Sorry. Um, farmers now prefer to grow corn. Do they actually prefer to grow corn? I think they're really bullied into it and don't really have a choice. Farmers are the cause of corn. I don't think they're actually the cause of corn, of corn and everything. I think... The cause is agribusiness and government, okay? So you don't really want to claim that they are the cause. Um, we can assimilate the most nutrients from corn. We definitely don't get nutrients or very many nutrients from processed corn. So just be aware of making these big sweeping statements that aren't really based in fact, okay? Lastly, Please, please, please integrate your quotes. Don't just dump them in there. Your quotes, just like your transitions, just like from sentence to sentence, they need to be connected. Your quotes need to be connected as well to the ideas that are before and after. Okay, so here's an example, and I will integrate this quote so you can see how to do it. Okay, so this means that food with corn is cheaper than other food. GMOs have more corn yield. As yields grew and farmers grew more corn, price, prices dropped. Pollen 27. We need to connect this quote to this idea here that food with corn is cheaper than other food. I'm going to take this out. Okay. And in order to integrate this quote, I'm going to use some of my own words. Or actually, I'm just going to put a comma here, as Pollen proves when he states yields grew and um, as yields grew and farmers grew more corn, prices dropped. And since I already used his name here, I'm going to take out his name in the parentheses. So now you see that the quote is seamlessly integrated into the sentence and it's not just dumped into the essay um, in the middle of the paragraph. All right, guys, these are your six tips. So go back, look at your essays, come up with an action plan and see what you can do better for your next essay and your rewrite. I'll see you soon. Bye.